Welcome back, baseball fans, to the third round of the 1970-73 Carryover League. We'll just jump right into this. In the third round, Cleveland with the first pick takes John Lowenstein, a rookie who could play all over the place. Infield, outfield, 292 hitter. Uh, came on and well in this year, then he had a lull, and then eventually finished the decade with the Orioles. But a nice pick in the short term for Cleveland. With the second pick, Colorado takes Rick Monday, 1970 card, 290, 844 OPS, lifetime Rocky, always as good once every four years, bounced around a lot to the A's, to the Cubs, to the Dodgers, makes him a good expansion player where he can play his whole career. All right, Toronto with a third pick in the draft, takes uh, Mike Lum, Atlanta Brave. He actually had his best year in 1973 in the Blue Jays signed up board. At age 27, Lum has 568 plate appearances, mostly known as a pinch hitter. 294 hitter, 813 OPS. One really great year. The year of the magical year of 1973, where there must have been something in the water in Atlanta when three of his teammates hit 40 home runs. Alright, the Cubs. Their third round pick. This is not flashy at all, but you just sign up for Randy Hunley, uh, a 244 hitter, third round pick because of his throwing arm. A minus three arm catcher in the National League North should slow down the Reds, Pirates, and Cardinals, hopefully, for the Cubs to win. All right, with the fifth uh, pick, it is the Padres. Um, they take Mike Corkins, a nice little reliever who in 1972 has his best year with a uh, 354 ERA and 133 whip. And that's what the Padres needed. They just needed to get him in his best year. Um, they didn't have a lot in 72. They had tons of stuff in 73. But they needed to get a 72-year player, and that's who they got. The Texas Rangers. Oh, boy, folks, you're going to be amazed with in the third round the Texas Rangers third round Jeff Burrows 605 plate appearances 30 homers 279 842 OPS how do you get this guy in the third round well because you got Frank Howard in the first round and Mike Epstein in the second round and that's how you can justify BPA Burrows is the third uh, guy at least with a 73 card he'll actually get a little bit better Wins the MVP, I believe, in 74 or 75, one of those years. So, Texas, at least with the first three picks, looks like they're going to try and get back to the playoffs where they were a couple years ago, where they were the Cinderella story. And they came crashing to earth last year. All right, the seventh pick belongs to Atlanta. And finally, we see the Phil Necro card being turned in. Normally, he's their first round pick. But when you have Rico Cardi hitting 366 and Darrell Evans hitting 41 home runs, Phil Necro is going to have to wait until the third round. Oh yeah, it's his best year of the four with a 108 whip and 282 innings. Milwaukee, eighth pick. They take a slugger from 71. They take Don Mincher. 291, 389 on base, 437 slugging. Actually, he Hit more homers in 70, but he brought his batting average up in uh, 71. Mincher's a nice little player. He's 33 years old. He's going to be near the end soon. Um, Mincher was one of those players the Oakland coveted to play first base, along with Mike Epstein. Texas wouldn't get rid of Epstein. Milwaukee wouldn't get rid of Mincher. So they had Oakland had to end up trading for Mike Hegan as their left-handed first baseman. All right, with a ninth pick in the round, uh, the Ohio players smartly pick up Rudy May, doubling down with lefty starters to go with Al Downing. Left-handed pitchers, the south side is the key to this thing. If you get three good lefties on your team, you stand a good chance of being successful in this league. And Al Downing and Rudy May are very good. Al Downing won 20, Rudy May won 12, but Rudy May has a better whip, a buck 18. The 10th pick. It was Arizona uh, announcing Ken Tatum, who they acquired in the offseason from the Angels. 
Tatum was a dominant closer for California, but he kind of burned out by his mid-20s. At 26 years old, he still has a nice year in 70, but after that, he starts to fall off. But he had a nice little, short little period where he was dominant. And they also announced that Paul Popovich is coming back with in the eighth round. So Arizona, looking pretty good. They got six guys already, and they only have two more spots to fill in the roster, and then they can start to swapping guys out they don't like for better guys if they want. All right, the Expos. This is an interesting move. They took, they had the rights to um, Gary Wasilewski, but they decided to go with Tom Walker, a, a Expo, a 23-year-old guy from their system, who in 72 had a 289 ERA in 74 innings out of the bullpen. They figure that's a, a bump up on Gary Wasilewski. So they're looking to trade Wasilewski to some team looking for relief help. Tom Walker. The Cardinals with the 12th pick. They've been doing some nice things. They made that trade to get Pat Dobson. They finally uh, completed their pitching staff by taking Chuck Taylor, 28 years old, 311 ERA with the Cardinals, buck 18 whip in 1970. He completes the staff, and they're done with their pitching. You just got to add hitting now to finish it. They got Taylor, Rabowski, uh, they have Ted Abernathy, another lefty in the bullpen. They have Danny Combs. Wayne Simpson, Pat, uh, not Pat, Rick Wise, and of course Bob Gibson. So St. Louis actually has a pretty darn good pitching staff. Actually, I would say it's better than the Cincinnati pitching staff, which is it pretty much has to be um, if they have any chance to compete in this division. Florida, uh, they finally um, added Jose Pagan and Chico Simone's 1970 cards. Uh, Pagan's 35, but they like his versatility, and Simone's 29 years old. These aren't flashy players for the Marlins. They just don't have a lot of guys to choose from. They're, they sort of are like the Padres and the Texas Rangers and the Expos of this era. They just don't have a lot to look at in the farm system. They, they're up against it, having to play in the National League East with the world champion Mets and the very much improved Braves and Phillies. It's kind of, they're in the same boat that the Toronto Blue Jays are in in the America League East. Um, they need a bunch of luck. All I can say, they gotta get lucky. All right, the White Sox, they had a 1973 Buddy Bradford. His numbers don't reflect how dominant he is against right-handed pitching. He's a 238 hitter, but he hits about 300 against right-handed pitchers and they like his defense which they don't have much of Buddy Bradford it becomes a fine chai sock all right the Pirates um, they had to settle for the first time in this draft this is the first time they had to pump the brakes on their pick and they had to they had to go with the 1970 Al Oliver card at age 23 because what they realized was 72 and 73 are booked solid with Hebner, Zisk, Rooker, and Moose. So by taking Oliver's 1970 card, he would immediately be up for a contract again next year. And now Oliver's best year would be 1974. So they'll skip 71, 2, and 3. So they're going to have one more very mediocre year of Al Oliver. However, he's good defensively with the leather at first base. So that'll help. Um, yeah, this is a Pittsburgh team that's supposed to do a lot. And frankly, Al Oliver is going to probably bat eighth this year. And then next year, he might bat third. I mean, that's how good this team is now with Oliver dropping that far down in the lineup. I mean, you got, oh my goodness. You got Stennett, Stargell, Clemente, Hebner, Zisk, Bob Robertson and his 30 bombs. Um, Manny Sanguian. He only hit 330 also. Yeah, so Al Oliver is probably going to bat 8th or ninth, which is ridiculous. Anyway. Seatol takes uh, Ted Ulander, who actually led his club in hitting. I think he played for Cleveland in 71 because he has the, the top hitting card on the team, even though he hit 288. 
And Seattle, watch out. They are doing some smart stuff. And they can get past Texas and California. I don't know about Oakland. But the runner-up to Oakland in the West is really going to be a fun race. Because you saw Texas looked good. And the Angels are kind of meh. They kind of got lucky last year. And they don't look so hot. All right. The Phillies. Wow, I really like in their draft. I'm liking the Braves draft. And, of course, the Mets are the Mets. Boy, that division's getting competitive. The Phillies improved Joe Horner to a sparkling 197 ERA and 106 whip and add Jerry Johnson to complete their pitching staff. Yes, they're done. The Phillies have locked up their pitching staff, and it's fantastic. It's Steve Carlton, Pat Dobson, Wayne Twitchell, and some other guy. Uh, not Rick Wise. Oh, uh, Barry Lursch. And in the bullpen, it is Joe Horner, Fred Gladding, Jerry Johnson, and Max Garcia. All these guys. These are all relievers. That's a good bullpen. No weak link on the Phillies. Look out for them. They're way too young. I mean, Schmidt's not even here yet. And uh, there you go. The Yankees are bent on proving to the world that they have the best pitching staff in the American League East. Not the Orioles. Not the great Baltimore Orioles. Nope, it's the New York Yankees. Sparky Lyles, 192 ERA. They are just hunting down ERA Mavens. They got 168 Fred Bean, 192 Sparky Lyle, 290 Fritz Peterson. All their pitchers of ERA is below three. And actually, they're, you know, they're trying to compete with the New York Mets for the market for pitching in the Big Apple. So watch out for the Yankee pitching. And they got some nice bats. But clearly, Baltimore and Boston should be favored in the American League East. All right, Portland added. This is a nice pick. And this is one of those picks, by the way, that whatever you do, if you've done any fantasy drafts and you've got you've got a guy you want to pick and you're waiting, 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 waiting for your turn in the draft and the guy right before you snatches your player and you get so mad. This is the perfect storm here where Portland, drafting before Minnesota, takes 1972 Ray Corbin. This is the secret sauce of the Carrier League draft. They had the rights to 72 Ray Corbin and the Twins had the rights to 73 Ray Corbin. <laughs> So who goes first? Well, Portland is right before the Twins, and they turn the card in for 72 Ray Corbin, and the Twins have to tear tear up the uh, their card. 72 Corbin with 262 ERA, 161 innings, and a buck 16 whip. And frankly, Portland needs that more than the Twins do. The Twins are a perennial playoff team, and Portland's just trying to fill out their roster. All right. So with that disappointment in the Twin Cities, the consolation prize was Pete Reichert's 1972 card, 225 ERA, and a 115 whip. Pete Reichert joins Paranowski, two stud lefty relievers in one bullpen. I, I, they, I don't think there are two better left-handed relievers in one bullpen in all of baseball. The Twins have cornered the market. So, congratulations, Twins. Hope the lefty-righty matchup Slayton games work out for you. Okay, Las Vegas. They were watching the Winter Baseball Classic and noticed Ray Culp really has a nice card. Um, has, has a lot of strikeouts on it. 197 strikeouts and 251 innings. 17-game winner. Was with Boston. Boston is loaded with pitching. Hard to believe. So they take uh, Ray Culp, and they also announce that they will take Art Shamsky in the eighth round. Shamsky's got a nice bat. 293, 371, 432, and 803 OPS. Coming off the Mets. All right, Kansas City completes their offense and neglects their pitching staff. They have not taken any pitching in this draft. They have decided to lock in... They want to be one of the top hitting teams in the American League, and they added to join Amos Otis, Ed Kirkpatrick, and Lou Pinella. They've added Pat Kelly, uh, a 291 year, a 394 on base for an on, for a leadoff hitter, 
And yes, that locks in the whole roster. They've got uh, Kirkpatrick and uh, Josephson catching Mayberry at first, P Cookie Rojas at second, Shaw at third. They've got uh, Cookie Rojas at, no, uh, Freddie Podtech at short. They got Pinella in left, Amos O's in center, Pat Kelly in right, platooning with Ron Swoboda, and they got uh, Bob Oliver at DH. So the Kansas City Royals, and what would be their, you know, they were an expansion team in 1969, and they've got players now from 1970 to 1973. So five years worth of players, and Kansas City is already built to be the favorite in their division and compete for a World Series. And that's only because of realignment. They're not in, in the old America League West with the Oakland A's. So they are free to fight for a division crown without being hindered by Oakland. They don't have to wait for Charlie Finley to break up the A's. They don't have to wait for George Brett. They're ready to go. All right. Houston. That was a nice little pump up for the Royals, but I've been doing that for years here. Um, Houston with a 23rd pick. Oh, this is a nice pick too. Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Reds were about five picks away and they had the rights to Jack Billingham. <laughs> so once again, Houston takes Jack Billingham in 1971 when he was in Houston. They are building up the ammunition for the Morgan trade. They're going to have Billingham and Morgan already. And uh, Cincinnati is going to have to wait their turn. Cincinnati's pretty anxious right now as they have not necessarily gotten better yet. The Astros, they could do pretty well because in the National League West, the Reds are not there. And it's basically the Dodgers and the Astros with a young Padre and and a Giants team that's getting old and not bringing their youngsters up. So Houston can slip through the cracks here. Uh, they also added Denny LaMaster, who was in their rotation last year. They added him to their bullpen. So Houston's looking good. With a 24th pick, Baltimore just looks at the remaining keepers they have, and they realize they have a keeper for Paul Blair. So he becomes their third round pick. In 1970, they also announced that Dick Hall, last year's closer, might still be this year's closer with eighth round pick. He only has a .92 whip, but they also drafted Grant Jackson, who has a .971 whip. <laughs> like, you really need to have great closers with that pitching staff, Baltimore. So, interestingly... Who does have the better pitching staff? It is, is it the New York Yankees or the Orioles? Well, Cuellar's ERA is 257. Grant Jackson's 190. But Dick Hall's is 308. And the Yankees pitchers all are below three. So Dick Hall's dragging the Orioles down, if, you're, if you believe such nonsense. All right, 25th pick. Uh, this is getting easy, folks. Oakland just keeps checking off the boxes. Uh, Reggie Jackson, check. Ken Holtzman, check. Uh, Dick Green. Uh, let's wait for Dick Green. How about Sal Bando? Okay, Sal Bando. 1970. The reason we picked this year was the gorgeous 118 walks and a 407 on base. <laughs> yeah, Oakland's going to be a lot of fun. Um, they've been in the playoffs, but they are supposed to go to the World Series soon. Again, I predict Oakland and Pittsburgh are my preseason favorites. All right, the Dodgers. I gotta say, I'm not crazy about this Dodger draft. Picking guys in years, improving guys, still neglecting the fact that they don't have any stud hitters on their team. They went again to the year of 73 and took Tommy John. He's a good pitcher, 218 innings, 310 ERA, and a buck 15 whip. And then and they announced that in the fifth round, Willie Crawford. Who at 295 with a 396 on base and 453? But again, no mention of Garvey, Lopes, Say, uh, even uh, Lee Lacey. None of the. All those guys might have come in all at once next year. They're going with an old offense and drafting all their pitchers here. 
took six of them. And they, because they improved, they have Messersmith, Sutton, John, Brewer, and Osteen in this draft. Five pitchers in this draft, two of those are improvements. And they've only dressed their offense one time. Oh well. The Angels. A ah, fun pick. 1973 saw Bobby Valentine, and this has really happened, he was moved from the Dodgers to the California Angels. And the Angels said, we need a shortstop. And of course, he can't field, but he can play there. He's a 431. But Bobby Valentine, it's 302 in 1973 for the Angels. And we talked about the team needing sticks, and well, they sacrificed defense in this case just to get a stick in the lineup at shortstop. 300 hitting shortstops are hard to come by during this era. So later in the draft, they need to find a defensive uh, uh, replacement. All right, the Cincinnati Reds, they're really getting nervous here. They're simply just going year by year. They went with 70 Rose, 71 May, and they're uh, getting 72 Wayne Granger. By the way, look at the ages, 29, 28, 28. All these guys in the prime. Uh, Granger, they'll have him for three years. Does the same stuff he did in 69, really. Um, they have Clay Carroll in the bullpen, too. The bullpen's going to be fine. They didn't feel the need to bring up Pedro Bourbon yet or um, Raleigh Eastwick or any of those guys. They're, they're fine with Granger and Carroll for the time being. And they made some notes that in 73, they're thinking about adding Geronimo and improving the Concepcion card, which suddenly... I'd get excited to get Concepcion's bat going since you don't have Joe Morgan yet. You probably need one more bat to keep scaring people. The Giants. Oh, finally, youth. So after going for William McCovey and Juan Marichal, they popped the can on the 1973 class and realized they had five great young players to decide between. Ed Goodson hitting 300, Gary Maddox, Gary Matthews, and also Steve Onaveras and Gary Thomason, all having great 1973s. I looked up the trades. Matthews played uh, for four years for the Giants and then became a free agent in 76, so that's what they're doing. Gary Maddox only played two years for the Giants and then he was traded to the Phillies for Willie Montanez. So, for now, the Giants are going to leave Gary Maddox buried in their minor league system because they have Bobby Bonds in center field and Ken Henderson can play center field. And they had Willie Mays playing center field last year until they traded him to the Mets. So they decided on a corner guy with power, Gary Matthews. Hope to have him won the Giants for three years. 300 hitter, 367 on base, 444, 812 and he can steal some bases. If you're wondering about Gary Maddox, he's a three in center field, and I don't, I, I can't picture him being that bad. He's gotta be a one in center field. When, once he's a one, we'll get him into baseball. Boston, they needed a left-handed pitcher. My God, they have one. 1972, John Curtis. He only plays for the Red Sox a couple years before he gets traded, but he, will join he's a starter seven relief he will go to the bullpen joining roger moret as a starter seven relief as bill lee goes into the rotation those are the three lefties on boston they are very good and all their starters are starter eights bill lee sonny siebert louis tion who's a starter nine and uh one other guy oh yeah marty Patton. um no no sonny siebert bill lee louis tion and can't remember the other guy. Oh, well. All right, Detroit. Uh, a terribly unsexy pick here. Uh, 1972 They didn't uh, was a year they won. Actually, it's funny. They went to the playoffs that year. But apparently all the guys uh, for that team were added in other years. And they decided to add Bill Slayback, who is decent. Um, he was available. And he's a Tiger at age 24. 320 ERA and a buck 22. It's not flashy. He completes their pitching staff. And they will probably, in the other year of 72, improve Al Kaline to join those 30 year olds. And lastly, again, the New York Mets just 
checking off the boxes, ticking them off, and they take 1970 Jerry Grody. Yes, he has a minus three arm in 1970, and he hit 255. And at one point, I was considered taking the 271 Jerry Grody because he hits so lofty, 271. And I'm thinking, really? Is there really much difference in Grody hitting 255 and 271, or would you just rather have Jerry Grody with a minus three arm? Would you rather have Jerry Grody with a minus three arm hitting 200? I don't really care. Not to mention he's a B hit and runner. So if he bats ninth and Bud Harrelson bats eighth, every time Bud Harrelson manages to get to first base, Grody will hit and run behind him. So that's the story. The Mets just completing the roster for a repeat opportunity. Hope you're enjoying the 1970-73 Carryover League draft results. We'll see you next time.